It's important when you're first learning about GIS to understand the connections between the theory and the practice. In other words, I can tell you about things like geodatabases and feature classes and vector primitives and points, lines and polygons and all that kind of stuff. But really it's important to then be able to see, well, how is that implemented in the software? How does that work from a practical point of view? So let's have a look at how that works. All right, so what we're going to do here is digitize some existing features to create our own new feature class. And I'm first going to create a new file geodatabase, then I'm going to create a new feature class in that, and then I'm going to trace some objects from a satellite image. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so I've got a drive here, which is my Z drive, or Z for my American friends. But wherever you want to store this new data, you just uh, right click on the folder or the drive and just select new file geodatabase. So remember, this is just a container that you're using to store something. And I like to give it a more meaningful name. So in this case, I'm going to be digitizing some features for an area in Toronto called Queen's Park. So that's what I'm going to name it. You can name it whatever you want. And so now I have a new file geodatabase that's empty. Okay. So then before I do anything else, I want to add a base map to my empty map document, I'm going to select imagery as my type of base map and uh, just click add. So what's happening now is that ArcMap is connecting to Esri's servers in the cloud. It's uh, downloading the image of a map um, into my map document, just as you would see in uh, Google Maps or any other kind of map service. But now that's actually being fed into my map document from the internet. So it starts out looking, uh, it's, we're able to see the entire world, and we'll just zoom in here to the area that I'm interested in mapping. Of course, this could be anywhere, but hey, why not do a little bit of Toronto? So now we can see the Great Lakes, and this is Toronto here. And you can do the same thing for whatever area it is that you're interested in mapping. And you may notice it does this from time to time uh, as you're zooming in. And the reason is, is that every time you zoom in, it has to go and get that new, more detailed, zoomed-in version of the web map from Esri server. So it can, sometimes there's a little bit of lag. Um, sometimes it's pretty responsive. It just depends. And if I continue to zoom in here, I'm going to find the area that I'm interested in. So I'm using the zoom tool, and I'm just going to pan over to find, there it is, the area that I'm interested in. So this is Queen's Park, which is the, the grounds or the area that the Ontario provincial government is based in. Um, you can see the building there. That's the Ontario legislature. And all I'm going to do is um, they've got this nice oval-shaped park around the, the grounds, and I, I'm just going to digitize some features from that. Okay, so what do I mean by digitizing, and what is it we're looking at here, and what, is, what does this all mean? So this is a picture of the Earth. This is from a satellite image, and this is a raster representation of the world. In other words, these are just pixels that show us what something looks like. I can't select anything off of this. I can't isolate it or work with it as it is right now. What I'm going to do is trace some things into a vector version that I can then work with whatever way I want to, to use it. So you'll notice here in my uh, table of contents, it's got a base map. I can turn that on and off just like I would any other layer. And now that I have that, I'm going to go back to the file geodatabase that I created, and I'm going to create a feature class. So I'm going to say new feature class, and I have to give it a name. So I'm going to say trees. Uh, I have to tell it what kind of feature I want. So there's po polygon line point. There's some other ones there that you might get into a bit later. But for now, I'm going to represent my trees as points. Say next. I'm going to select the coordinate system that I want to use. So for Toronto, that would be uh, NAT83 UTM zone 17N. It may vary depending on where you are and what coordinate system you want to use. That's something we'll cover in a different section. But for now, that's what I'm going to use. Say next. And we don't have to worry about the XY tolerance. I'm just going to go with the default for that. And say next again. Now, if I want to include uh, my own column or field in my attribute table, I can add it in here. There's two that are added by default. One's called object ID and one's called shape. Those are used internally by the software. You really don't need to pay too much attention to them right now. But for example, if I wanted to include something like type for the type of tree, 
I could just put in the name of the column that I want to use or the field, which is type. And then I have different options here in terms of the type of field I could use. So some are for storing numbers or text or dates. So for this, I want it to be text. And I can just say OK. And I'm going to go with the default there, which was 50 characters long, and say Finish. Now, sometimes you'll get a warning like this where it's saying, wait a minute, you just specified a different coordinate system, which was UTM Zone 17. That's a different coordinate system than the one that's being used to store the imagery that I'm using as my background. Uh, for what I'm doing right now, I don't need to worry about that. Again, that's something we'll cover in this section on coordinate systems and projections and things. I'm just going to say, yeah, that's okay. Don't worry about it and close it. Okay, so now I have a new feature class in here that is being represented as a dot. I can change that to something more fun. So let's search for something related to trees. There's a whole lot of different symbols available depending on how specific you want to be. I could have Joshua trees, great album by the way, uh, Chinese flame trees. But I'm just going to go way down here and pick one, this one here that I think is pretty easy to see and uh, looks pretty good for, for what I want to do. So what I'm going to do now is create my own vector points for those trees. So I need an editor toolbar to do that. So I go up to Customize, Toolbars, and there's a whole lot of different toolbars available for various functions or things you want to do, tasks. So there's one here called Editor. I'm going to select that. And now I have an editor toolbar that I can use to do my editing. I'm just going to do some really simple stuff now just so you see how this works. And if you want to create your own feature classes quickly, you can do this. I want you to know how to do this from the very beginning. I select the editor drop down here and say start editing. So with a database, you have to tell it when you want to start editing and when you want to stop editing. So I've started editing. And then something that may not be obvious if you haven't done this before is there's this little tab way on the end or button for create features. And if I click on that, it opens a new pane over here on the right saying create features. So now if I select trees, I can go to my map and you'll see that it's actually showing a little tree symbol by the cursor. I hope you can see that. And so wherever I click, so I'm, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the trees on the image and I'm saying there's a tree there. And if I click there, that is now creating a tree symbol or a point in a vector format inside my feature class that represents that tree. And so I can do another one. I could do one for here and here. And I can click all day long and create trees for these locations um, off of my image. Now, of course, it all depends on how much detail there is in the image that you're tracing off of, how accurate you want to be. I'm doing a pretty quick job here, but I'm hoping that you get the idea. And so this gives me um, a new set of points that I can actually do something with. I can right click on the create features part of the trees here and say properties and see what I've got here. So I've got trees, points, how I'm setting that up. Okay. Um, and I can go to the tab here and say attributes. And so now when I select an object in my map, so let's say I select this one here, then I can type in the attribute for that particular tree. So let's say that's a maple tree. I can literally just type in maple and that now has the maple symbol. I can go to the next one, go to here. So this is a different tree and maybe this is an oak tree. I can go to a third one. I won't do all of these. I'm just going to show you a couple of them and see how this works. Go to here and maybe this is a beech tree. Okay, and you can continue to do this as much as you need to. And then I can say uh, stop editing. And when I say stop editing, it will ask me, well, wait a minute, don't you want to save your edits? It doesn't save them automatically, so you have to make sure to do this. And I'm going to say, yes, please do save those. And so now, if I open the attribute table, you can see that uh, the attributes that I typed in, maple, oak, and beech, are actually associated with those points in my digitized version. So now I can select that and see that particular point on the map. I can do the same thing for oak and so on. And that's all there is to it. That's literally how you can create your own data. You can easily create your own file geodatabase. You can easily, easily create your own uh, feature classes and they can either be points, lines, or polygons. And it's, it's really that straightforward.